graduate student at Georgia Southern University studying oil painting, one of my teachers, Marie Cochran, asked me a question that led me to eventually develop a mixture that I use to create dimensional images that I call sculpted paintings. Now, the question she asked was, why are most of the subjects of your paintings white women, <laughs> like in this piece here? And um, first I took offense, but as I thought about it, a door to consciousness opened inside me, and I realized that I had the power to have critical thinking, and that led me to the, reali to the realization that I had the power to choose why I did what I did through purposeful questioning. So, even though the fact that I was born in Kingston, Jamaica, none of that was reflected in my work. It was like I'd been living in a fog, just imitating the things that I had seen on TV or in magazines, and I was oblivious to my own consciousness. So even though this fog was open, or the door to this was opened when I was in college, I was still technically in that fog about 20 years later. Um, and even though I, I, my work had become more self-reflective and I had had some modicum of success uh, with having pieces in the collections of uh, Lucy Baines Johnson, who's the daughter of LBJ and Lady Bird Johnson, and also in Col Colin Powell's collection, and Queen Latifah, I still had felt pretty mediocre. And after my fifth child, <laughs> and, um, and hitting my 40s, I said, I know everyone has a purpose to their life, but mine could not be just having babies. So, <laughs> so I need to figure, find my purpose, because I believe that everyone is born with a purpose in life. So that led me to ask my first conscious question, where I said to myself, why are you here? Literally and figuratively. And the answers led me to get a divorce, <laughs> remarry, quit my job, and focus on my artwork. I had created this piece a few years later, but I still felt really stuck. And I, that foggy feeling kept coming over me again. And what I had learned when you're in the fog, when you're, any of us are in the fog, we ask ourselves, how can I get out of this fog safely? And you know that when you see brake lights in front of you, that's probably a safe direction to go in and you'll be safe. So I applied that to the question for myself. And after I, I created this piece, I felt really, really stuck. So I started asking myself questions. And I realized, that when you're in this place right here, you have to start asking yourself questions. And the questions that I asked myself was, what in art created this image? Why was this image important? And I discovered that you, um, the premise that this image is based on is you, uh, is the piece transporting you into this place by creating an illusion through dimensionality. And it, if it evolved in me thinking, okay, so when oil painting was created in the 15th or 7th century, whatever your belief is, when it was created, those images were necessary, but today with the proliferation of imagery, a flat image is kind of redundant. So I thought, what would happen if I could actually get that image to come off the canvas instead of just creating the illusion of coming off the canvas? So I started trying a bunch of different things to mix it into my oil paints to try and achieve that. 
um, anything from sand to dryer lint, and um, none of it was really working. And then one day I noticed that there was some sawdust in, uh, in my studio that I had used in the past to create images like these, um, where I had mixed the sawdust into the oil paint just to create texture. So I said, well, let me try that. So I mixed the oil paint in, and the result was pretty gummy, and plus it, <laughs> it took forever to dry. So um, I decided, well, acrylics dry faster, so let me try acrylics. So I mixed the sawdust in with the acrylic, and uh, it was st still gummy, so I added water. Then it was way too soupy. <laughs> so I had some acrylic medium, and I said, well, let me try add that to it. Um, and it was a little better, but there was way too much pigment. So I finally said, well, why don't I just add the sawdust directly into the acrylic medium? And then, Eureka! <laughs> I found my own brake light in the fog. <laughs> and um, what it did was this idea of following your, your, your breadcrumbs and finding your brake lights in the fog, I, I call the brake light my breadcrumbs um, because they lead you to the path of your own life's purpose. So, even though I developed this mixture, I didn't know what in the world to do with it, and developing ain't easy. And um, this image re made me realize I need to do some more research, and because uh, I qu I uh, equated it with being a hot mess. So I kept doing more research. And as I was doing my research, a past breadcrumb came to mind, where I, um, at, which is high relief sculpture. And the piece on the right is a piece by the artist Luca della Robbia, who was a sculptor back in the 15th century. And uh, I created the piece on the left um, to try and work my way into this sculpting thing, but as I realized, as I worked on it, I realized that I could, um, a couple of things. I realized first that the image on the right was uh, created by the sculptor removing the material, the marble, to create the image, and the image on the left that I created, I was adding material to create the image. And I was like, that's pretty cool and radical right there. So, but then I also found out that I was sculpting as I was creating this image. So I had always loved sculpting and painting, and it was allowing me to do that. So it was coming together, but it still was really wasn't very cohesive. Then a few months later, my husband and I took a trip to Barcelona, Spain, and while we were there, I saw these trees that had this bark that looked like collages. I'm like, what in the world are these trees? I found out they were sycamore trees. And I thought, OK, it's coming together. I'm seeing it. This will go great with my sawdust. This is a perfect combination. And it um, also had knots in it. And I was like, well, the knots are uh, created by removing a branch. A negative thing has happened to this tree, and I thought I would change it to a positive by changing that to a face. So, all that led me to create my first sculpted paintings, and I call these are, are part of the Sycamore series that I created. My husband, um, after he saw these pieces, he was like, that looks pretty innovative you should probably get that patented. <laughs> so I did more research, and um, I went to compare trees to humans. And I found out that humans are 35% carbon, 
trees are 50% carbon and the stars are 100% carbon. And I was like, we can't waste this carbon. So we have to use it to do something. Um, and I thought that this was a perfect thing to create with that carbon. And also in my um, research, I found out that the components of trees are cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignin. So, my research led me to file a patent, a process patent, that's pending, for hemicellignin paint, which I call hemicell for short. And um, as I, the term follow your breadcrumbs came to me as I was leaving trails of sawdust all over my studio. So, I was like, yeah, follow your breadcrumbs, I like it. Um, so, all of these things, uh, these ideas, came together to create what I call anti-establishment art. And through this anti-establishment art, I use recycled sawdust that I mix with a clear acrylic polymer, and I use my paintbrush to form it into like a dough, and then I use my paintbrush to form the images and to create the dimensional images. And um, I use reverse sculpture, an additive as opposed to a subtractive process to create the image. And they are best viewed to fully appreciate the dimension in person as opposed to sitting on your phone and flipping through. I also wanted to promote the awareness of preserving our natural resources and encourage touching, which is a no-no in the regular art community, and um, highlight the need to cherish one of our most significant resources that has been taken for granted since the beginning of time, women, and <laughs> to stand against um, societal expectations, gender bias, and human trafficking. So Einstein said that imagination is way more important than knowledge because knowledge is anchored to the past, but imagination is where the future lies. So, as I hone my craft and I create each new piece, my imagination evolves and expands, like with this piece that I call Blue Grouper, where I incorporated in the fin the uh, uh, recycled plastic bottles to highlight the um, overfishing and pollution in our oceans. So, I don't know where my next breadcrumbs will, what they are or where they'll lead, but I am in awe and humbled by the fact that a question asked by my teacher could lead me and have such a profound effect in my life because I acted on a question that didn't make sense to me instead of just blowing it off. Now, I believe that each of us here has our purpose, and if you act on it, you should be able to follow your own breadcrumbs. Thank you.